to. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Curriculum Committee for February 23rd, 2023. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Cox, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Lichter? Present. Ms. Humphrey? Present. Ms. Dominowski? Ms. Dominowski? Ms. Hassan? Here. Mr. Offerman? Present. Uh, Ms. Cox, uh, Ms. Dominowski did say here. I don't know if, I think it was right when you had gone on to Ms. Hassan. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's here. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Cox, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. McComas? Here. Ms. Shea? Here. Ms. Myers? She's on mute. Yeah. <laughs> I can see her. Here. <laughs> Dr. Elmendorf? Here. Dr. Wistead? Here. Dr. Ferguson? Here. And Mr. Conley? Not sure. He is uh, excused from today's yes. meeting. And we also have Ms. Dingle. Yeah, and so we have additional members. We have Ms. Dingle. Here. Ms. Fisher. Here. Dr. Grubbs. Here. Ms. Lanza. Here. And Ms. Sinkowski. And I apologize if I butchered her name. <laughs> you said it right. She will be joining, but okay. she's not on yet. But you said it right. Thanks. <laughs> Committee chairs will facilitate discussion by calling off names of committee members to speak in turn. Committee members will also acknowledge they have a question by calling on the chair and then stating their name. Staff members will answer any questions posted by committee members by saying their name first, then speaking. Um, the staff members then want to add any discussion, may call on the chair to speak, then saying their name. If the chair calls for any motions, the committee members will move and say their name, and a second committee member will second and say their name. The chair will then state, may I have a roll call vote? Assistants will speak, assistants will speak each committee member for their vote and record appropriately for the ETA. Okay, first thing is new business, instructional materials for approval. So um, this is our first meeting. Mary, I don't know if you wanted to say anything or will you want to just jump right into it? Sure, no, I'll take just a moment. Um, first of all, I just want to welcome everyone to the curriculum committee. Uh, I like to say that this is the best committee because it's the core mission. It's about teaching and learning. I know Mr. Offerman's heard me say that before, so I just sincerely want to welcome everyone. Um, we appreciate each and every opportunity to work with you, and we um, are excited to have conversation with you on each and every item that um, comes through the agenda. Uh, and we're very committed to supporting you so that you're knowledgeable around the resources that we have for our children, the curriculums that we have, the services that we provide, uh, because we want to help you understand everything um, that we're doing so that you can make great decisions on behalf of our children. So I just sincerely want to say that. You'll get to know my team members. All of them are present today except for two. Uh, Dr. Holmes is not with us today, and Mr. Conley is not with us today. Uh, Ms. Ferguson is with us. However, she does not have any items items on today's agenda. And I don't think, um, Dr. Elmendorf, I don't think you actually have an item, do you? I do have one. I have oh, one. you do have one, forgive <laughs> me. And we, we typically don't have as many uh, items for approval today. The volume is typically um, correlated to what items are going to contracts committee in the next month. Um, so we will always discuss them since our meeting's the third meeting of the month. We'll discuss them in February for the March contracts. We'll discuss in March the April uh, materials that are going to contracts. So just so that you have a sense of that rhythm. And um, 
after today's meeting, I would invite any of our committee members if you want to send me topics that you would like informational topics that you would like to understand more about. Um, a good example is magnet programs. There's often a lot of interest and um, around our magnet programs. You may have constituents who reach out to you about magnet programs, and so I want to make sure that you have a full understanding of the, the reach of our program. So that's just one example. So I invite you to email me topics that you would like to see. Uh, and I typically develop a roadmap. Um, and then we try to uh, fit informational items in uh, throughout the year to support you in the process. Mr. Offerman can attest we're flexible around that. Sometimes there may be a topic that um, comes to the surface of, of interest and we make adjustments. And so we try to be responsive and flexible to your needs as well. So with that, I'll turn it right back over to you, um, Ms. Lichter, to um, jump right in. All of the items we're bringing forward today are um, for approval as they are on their way to Contracts Committee next. Thank you. Um, so Mary, one question. When you say they're yes. for approval, so then we need to make motions to approve them or? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, so okay. we will need to make motions for approval. You'll take a roll call vote. Uh, the okay. vote will be uh, counted. Um, just in the event that an item is not um, approved, it still moves forward to contracts, but when it gets to contracts, it'll say that it, it was not supported at curriculum. Um, and then could because ultimately it's the full board that has final approval on things. Okay, thanks for that clarification. And also, sure. Thank you for all the work that your staff did ahead of time um, as far as the narrated PowerPoints and to the committee that that is something new. Um, so we'll at the end of the meeting, we'll get give them some feedback about the, whether you felt that was an effective way to get the information instead of going through it all um, during the meeting. So we were trying to get more questions answered than just um, information presented. So the first. Um, the first new business item is curriculum phase forms. And are there any questions on the curriculum phase forms? And Ms. Shea is here to answer those if we have any questions. It may be helpful in this instance, since this is our first time doing it this way, um, if Ms. Shea could explain what the phase forms are just very briefly, and then we can um, answer any questions. Okay, Absolutely. great. Yeah. I'd be happy to. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the phase form process is the process we use to identify new courses uh, for our course catalog for registration. So um, it's also the process by which we mark as inactive any courses we're no longer using um, and then make any changes or name changes um, that we might need to make for the courses. Um, it's typically done on a two year cycle. So in other words, um, in the spring, we'll be back again with new courses that we're recommending um, that would be for enrollment for the 24-25 school year. And the reason we do that in advance is twofold. One is, of course, we want to get permission for the course so that we can begin developing curriculum or identifying resources. And then two, we want to get ahead of the student registration process. So our students start registering for courses. Uh, we update the course registration guide every summer and then in the fall they start to pick their classes as early as like November they start thinking about that um, so that's why we always work a year in advance um, when we come back in the winter that's typically for any additional cleanup we may need to do and oftentimes as you'll see is the case this this afternoon um, once we have new courses approved oftentimes they replace old courses or courses that no longer align to standards so typically when we come back in the winter you'll see a lot more courses for deactivation which is the case today. So today we have a little bit of everything. Uh, hopefully you had an opportunity to, um, we also submitted, and I hope you got the full phase form summary, um, which is um, actually shorter than in other uh, times, but you'll see there's quite a bit. Um, and just for context, we currently have 4,585 courses in our course catalog in BCPS. So uh, it's a big undertaking, but we're excited to bring the information forward and answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Mache. Are there any questions about the phase form process? I was just so okay. thorough in my narration. That <laughs> you were. I, it was there was 13 performing arts and 15 new words. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so ma OK, great. May, may I have a motion to? Sorry, I, I just have one one quick sure. question. Okay. Go ahead. Um, 
some of these um, their active date or a lot of them the active dates are pretty early as far as they just started um, you know this year this school year and we're deactivating them I'm just um, is that so, is that yes so that, that that column should be titled active or deactivate date so actually that's the date that we're going to deactivate that course that we have identified for oh deactivation. okay yeah, but thank you for sense. bringing that to our attention. We just need to update that column title. OK, that makes more sense. Thank you. Yeah, and it's tricky because we can't deactivate a course while kids are in it. So we have to hit that right sweet spot before we start enrolling again and we put kids in a course that we're trying to deactivate. But thank you. We'll make that update. OK, thanks. Sure. I think there is uh, just one more uh, point of clarification. This I, I place this as the first item on our agenda today um, because this, unlike the other items, while it is an, an item for approval, this is not actually any item that you'll see in contracts. This is uh, typically in uh, the June Board of Education meeting. Uh, we bring forward like this comes here. We have discussion, answer any questions, and then it'll come forward to the full board as a as an information item, I think, um, or an approval item in May or June. Uh, so just to clarify that there's no purchasing that goes with this approval process. The other ones there are though. Thank you. But Mary, we still need it officially yes. approved. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion to accept the phase form process for course approval as presented. So moved Offerman. Is there a second? Second Pumphrey. OK, Miss Cox, may will you take a roll call vote, please? Yes, Miss Lichter. Um, yes. Miss Pumphrey. Yes. Miss Dominowski. Yes. Miss Hassan. Yes. Mr. Offerman. Yes. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. So it motion passes. The next item for new business is the pre-K curriculum, and I believe Dr. Wisted and Ms. Dingle are here for that. So yeah. if you want to give a summary and then we'll move on to questions. Sure, I can provide a summary. Um, we, uh, as you know, are expanding pre-kindergarten, uh, not only full day programs, but through the years we've been expanding half day programs and the current curriculum is out of print. So we are bringing forward a contract um, that went through the 6002 process and these instructional materials that is a curriculum that can be used. These materials can be used for the three year old and four year old programs, both of which will be expanding over the next few years because of the blueprint for Maryland's future. Ms. Stingle, do you have other things you'd like to add? Yeah, I, I think you did a great job with that. One of the um, the main reasons why we selected this curriculum is because it's an interdisciplinary curriculum where uh, a lot of our pre-K curriculum is focused on the early literacy. Uh, this curriculum focuses on science and math and early literacy and social emotional, which is all the components that our children need. And so while there's still a focus on literacy and er emergent literacy, it's integrated with all of the wonderful things that our children naturally do. I, I, oftentimes I think of home, like if we have little children at home, they're like figuring out science on their own. They're putting stuff in their mouth and they're feeling things and, you know, they're listening to things. So this curriculum really does take the way that the child learns and integrates that into an interdisciplinary curriculum where teachers just have to look in one location for all of the resources that they need as opposed to going to multiple resources to meet all of the content areas and standards for pre-k. And one other thing um, that we can share with you is that there are currently teachers that are field testing these materials and Ms. Stingle's um, staff is collaborating with them and, and receiving feedback from them on the materials. Thank you. Are there any questions about the pre-kindergarten instructional materials? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Um, I did see that we were being field tested and um, you talked to about 10% of the teachers that are using this program already. And some of the feedback you're getting is that um, they have to supplement it a little bit. Is that true? That they they're asking for more assistance or way and ways in teaching this. I'm just um, 
I know that's kind of an issue that's happening in elementary schools as far as needing wanting a one box where everything is there that the teachers need and they don't have to supplement it with their own curriculum or their own extra work. Sure, and, and, and so that is correct. Teachers are asking for more and that is part of our, our work with the field test process is doing exactly that. We're collecting information from the teachers and based off the feedback that we're, we're receiving, my team is creating. So for example, um, they wanted uh, a, a scope and sequence that really went through the day to day. So we're doing that. We're creating a daily schedule for our teachers. Um, they wanted more, um, they wanted to continue to use social emotional um, skills in the curriculum and how to embed that into the curriculum. And they, this curriculum already has that, but they were also familiar with some of the resources and tools that they're currently using, and they wanted us to embed that in there. And so we're doing that right now as we speak. Um, they asked for um, resources that just make lives for teachers easier, like curriculum cards. Can we create that? Or vocabulary cards. Can we create that as opposed to having teachers create that? So the beauty of a field test is that we're working with a small population of the teachers to receive the feedback and so that we can engage in the process of giving them the resources that they need. Okay, um, thank you. And a lot of these curriculums are, you know, evidence based. How is this a brand new curriculum or has it been along for how long has it been around or been used? Is it um, what are the what are the ratings on it? I guess is what I'm asking for. Yeah, it is a newer curriculum. Um, I don't remember the date that it first came out. I can take a look at that and get back to you on that. Um, and it we have done some uh, research around it. Unfortunately, they don't use a lot of the pre-K curriculum is not in that the site that is recommended. So we had to do some other research and we mentioned some of the research in uh, the presentation prior. Um, so we had to do some additional research for Connect for Learning as long as well as all of the the uh, the curriculums that we were doing research on. So we, uh, the people that wrote the curriculum are experts in the field of uh, emergent literacy and math, which is really what drew us there. But also we looked at the Texas Resource Review that gave it um, a really good, um, strong rating. The Louisiana Believes, uh, we, we took a look at that. And we also looked at, um, the uh, there was a curriculum vetting website that we took a look at too. And, and then we also consulted with some neighboring schools that are currently using the curriculum. Uh, for example, Howard County is a curriculum that's using it and Prince George's and uh, Anne Arundel counties are currently using Connect for Learning. So we, we because there's not a lot right now out there for pre-K um, because this idea of full day pre-K is new and um, Currently, what LEAs are doing is everyone's using something different. There is no consistency within the state. Some are using teacher created curriculum. Some are using they're just there's such a variance. Um, so what we had to do is also consult with LEAs that are currently using Connect for Learning and uh, get feedback from them as well. So we've received feedback from our teachers, but we also got some feedback from the LEAs that are currently using it or are piloting it as well. Um, I mean, pre-K is curriculum for Baltimore County Public Schools might be new, but it's not something that is new to the area. I mean, there's accredited private uh, curriculums that are being used in a lot of the daycares um, and preschools. Uh, has Was any consulting done with, with that or is it just? So accredited, accredited schools, pre-K private providers does not necessarily equate to a, a um, an approved curriculum. So even in our accredited private providers, different schools, different private providers are using different curriculum. So one is using a creative curriculum. None of the four accredited or approved private providers that uh, we have received approval from from MSDE are using Connect for Learning right now, but they're looking into it. So one is using creative, uh, creative curriculum. Another one is using a, a teacher developed curriculum in the private providers. So even within the private providers, um, accredited private providers, the resource that they're using um, vary. Um, several of them are using Frog Street right now. Um, that's a little outdated as well, um, just with the new information that we know about how children learn. Um, and so we're, we're working with those private providers actually 
um, looking at curriculum as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Pumphrey, do you have a question? Actually, Ms. Dominassi covered it for me and I heard my answer, so thank you. Okay, well, that worked. Any other questions about the pre-K materials? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the pre-K instructional materials as presented? So moved, Offerman. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Hassan. Thank you. Ms. Cox, may we have a roll call vote? Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion passes. Next new business item is interpreting services for deaf or hard of hearing individuals. And that um, we'll call on Ms. Myers to give us a brief summary. Yeah, hi everyone. Good afternoon. So Good. this contract is um, for a modification for us to continue to provide interpreting um, services for our students and staff who um, are deaf or hard of hearing so and and families. So we provide those interpreters for um, anyone who is participating in a Baltimore County activity or within school that needs um, an interpreter. OK, thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Myers? OK, hearing none, is there a motion to approve the contract for interpreting services? So moved, Offerman. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Pumphrey. Thank you. May we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Don't go anywhere, Ms. Myers, because next is um, the discussion on non-public special education facilities. Yep, so hi again. So uh, this is an existing contract that again um, is being modified to add three additional non-public school facilities. So we have an existing non-public contract um, that uh, I talked through within um, the slides. So hopefully if you have any questions about that, but then this is adding three additional schools that are not on the current list. So anytime we need to add additional schools for a variety of reasons, it may be that a student is placed by another agency that we are responsible for the education, educational portion, or if we need to use a different school than we have, then um, we would come back and um, update that contract to reflect the new added facility. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Myers? OK, hearing none, is there a motion to approve the non-public special education facilities contract? So moved, Auberman. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Hassan. Thank you. May we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pomfrey? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion passes. Next on the list is musical instruments and supplies and materials contract. And for that, Ms. Shea. Good afternoon. So this uh, we will bring, as Dr. McComas said, you will, this is one you will see at an upcoming contracts committee meeting. Uh, this is a contract modification. And for those of you who've been here before, um, we've been here several times. This is the contract that we use for the purchase of musical instruments and then supplies and materials to support music programming. The reason that we have come back uh, multiple times is to increase spending authority for a number of reasons. Um, in the last several years, we came back to increase spending authority due to an increased need for PPE during the pandemic specific for musical instruments. So things like bell covers um, for instruments. Then we came uh, for a spending increase uh, to support new construction and make sure that Rossville Elementary School had everything they needed to open. Um, now we are coming because we have um, two reasons for the request to increase our spending authority. Um, one was unfortunate. It was due to um, flooding that happened in school 
skills and the need to replace a significant number of instruments um, on a faster cycle than we'd anticipated. Um, and then also, as you saw in the phase form process with the courses, we do have some expansions we're making in the music and audio technology programming, and this increase in spending authority will allow us to purchase supplies and materials to support that programming. Um, Ms. Sinkowski, is there anything that you want to add that I left off? I think you did a great job, Megan, um, talking about history and then where we are right now. Um, we we don't anticipate any additional increases to the spending authority um, over the, the life of this contract. So just wanted to add that. Knock wood. Mm -hmm. Yes, no flooding. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, I have one, and I'm not sure that you can answer this, but um, the flooding and the mold issue with the instruments, is this um, at the schools that where this happened, was it, you know, just to kind of because of problems with the building or was it just random rain came through, flooded, like pipe broke, something? I mean, what, what, what happened? Uh, I can speak a little to that. It's my understanding. Um, if you remember over winter break, we had a few days that were um, below uh, freezing significantly, some really cold days. And I do think that that um, contributed to kind of burst pipes and, and that temperature regulation over the break um, that wasn't able to be maintained. And if I can add to that, what often happens with instruments, which is the case here, um, it's mold. It's very difficult even after a, it doesn't have to be a super extensive flood to cause damage to an instrument that's too difficult to ensure that it's clean. And so they're deemed that they need to be replaced for the safety of kids. So um, it wasn't a catastrophic situation, but if, if these instruments get wet, especially if it's over an extended time like a break, it's too difficult for us to ensure that um, with mold and the risk that we don't replace them. Thank you. Sure. If it was a issue with a flood or something or a broke pipe, wouldn't we get insurance? Wouldn't the, the school list that for their insurance? The spending will still go against the contract, the contract initially. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So that's. So yes, and the spending, whatever the source of funding, it still goes against this contract. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? May I have a motion to approve the musical instrument supplies and materials contract? So so move move <laughs> okay, somebody said, I think I heard Mr. Offerman do the first motion is, and who was doing it simultaneously? Was that Ms. Demonowski? Yes, so second yes. Demonowski. Thank you. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Humphrey? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Next is the VEX robotics contract. Um, so, Mache, you want to give us a real brief overview? Sure can. So, um, VEX Robotics is, um, we have robotics uh, teams and clubs and programming, and these resources are used in elementary, middle, and high schools. Um, and this is a uh, necessary change because the vendor that we had been using uh, for the purchase of VEX Robotics materials is no longer approved by the manufacturer. So we want to make sure that we have an approved contract so we can continue to support the purchase of the kits and bundles for the students to use, as well as uh, the programming software and participating in this competition. So we need to um, change vendors in order to be able to maintain that access for these programs. Thank you. Are there any questions about the VEX Robotics materials? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the VEX Robotics materials contract? So moved, Offerman. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Hassan. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And I would be remiss if I didn't put in a plug. Or if any board members are ever interested in volunteering at our robotics uh, competitions, we would love to have you. <laughs> oh, sign me up. Can I bring oh, okay, my son? We would love it. Oh, great. We'll take you up on that. We can connect <laughs> you with Dr. Grubbs. So well, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs>
Let Hello. us know what the dates are, okay? And and there's donuts. We have CTE donuts, so we'll send you. Uh, <laughs> I will follow up with Dr. McComas to share. The next one's coming up, I believe, in March, maybe even March third. But March third, right? Right. Oh. Look at the date. Oh, is it in the chat? Oh yeah. Oh, Miss Bumphrey said, "See, I got to put in the plug where I get it." So this is great. Okay. Thank okay. you. We'll send you that information so you can join us. That would be wonderful. Okay, great. Okay, next is. Um, engineering and technology and biomedical curriculum materials. And Mache, you're up again. I sure am, like a bad penny. So no, it's all uh, going good right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is all good stuff. So um, I'm also here on behalf, and I want to, you know, certainly invite my CTE colleagues, um, Dr. Gubbs and Ms. Fisher, to join as well. But um, this is our Project Lead the Way Biomedical Program, PLTW for short. And so we need to, um, we've had this in place. We are looking for an increase in our contract spending authority. So it's another modification. Um, and this is because they've made updates to the curriculum, so we have additional purchases to make, but also because we are expanding program opportunities with enrollment. Um, so we, of course, uh, CTE is a, it's CTE month, so this is a perfect time for us to showcase this wonderful program. Um, but this is a curriculum that's already been in place um, from Project Lead the Way, um, but because of expansions and curricular updates, we are seeking approval to increase spending authority. Thank you. Any questions? OK, the narrated PowerPoints must have worked. So may I have a motion <laughs> to approve the engineering and technology and biomedical curricular contract? So moved, Pumphrey. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Dominowski. Thank you. May I have a roll call vote? Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you. I would Next. just like to um, offer as well. Um, I'm sorry to jump in, but um, any like a lot of these programs like PTL, uh, PLTW, if any of you are interested in visiting those programs at some point, rather this year or upcoming years, we can certainly arrange for you to come see, you know, the items that you approve, see them in action in classrooms with children and teachers. So I just wanted to add that since we're, uh, you know, getting used to, you know, the, the committee again. So thank you. That'd be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next is um, textbooks, technology education for grades 9 to 12. Mache. Here we are again. So are. Um, this is for uh, supporting the purchase of or ongoing support for the purchase of our technology and edu engineering education textbooks and teacher resources. So this supports our high school uh, courses in foundations of engineering, engineering principles and applications and engineering technology. Um, so again, it's a modification. It's not a new contract, but we are seeking an increase in spending authority. Um, we purchase this out of either operating funds and CTE, but there is also a consumable. Um, schools are given a consumable allocation fund that they use to then uh, replace the consumable materials as part of um, the technology education program in high schools. Dr. Grubbs or Ms. Fisher, anything that you want to add? No, I, you knocked it out of the park. Thank you. I've, I have good teachers in my department. I will add maybe one quick thing. Um, right. A few years ago, we had to change textbook vendors. Um, I actually wrote the book before this book. And I so from a, a conflict of interest, we went from um, Goodhart Wilcox to Cengage. So this contract actually has a unique history over the past five to seven years. So, so thank you. Thank you. Any questions about the textbooks? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the textbook technology for grades 9 to 12 contract? So move, so move Offerman. Okay, we got two of them. So I heard Maggie motion. First second one. Album. And then <laughs> Mr. Offerman second. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. Offerman. Yes. Thank you. We're going to now discuss the, thank you, Mache, the video production equipment and associated services. And for that, Dr. Elmendorf is ready. This thank is the one I didn't realize it was you, uh, Dr. Elmendorf. This is the one I thought was Mache as well. Go ahead. 
we, we kind of share it to some extent. Okay. okay. Um, but as you can see, Michelle had enough contracts for today, right? Yeah. Sorry. I'll, I'll go ahead <laughs> she and has take one this. more. So this um, is a contract that schools primarily spend against, and it is for TV studio installation, parts, maintenance, etc. And the TV studios are used in order to synthesize learning uh, for our students through writing, content knowledge, um, expression, collaboration, and research skills. Um, the BCPS TV studio also, as you saw on the slide, um, plays an integral instructional role for various BCPS magnet schools and programs, which are listed in the PowerPoint. Um, there are at least six that um, this is really an integral part of their, their instructional program um, to meet the needs of the magnet um, curriculum. And then um, from what I understand, BCPS TV occasionally uses this contract to spend against for their needs as well. Thank you. Any questions for Dr. Almendorf? Just a quick question. Yes, go ahead, Christina. Um, when you mentioned that that uh, BCPS TV also uses some of this, um, what is that? At, what's that portion approximately? I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah, we'd have to go sure. back and find those those details. Um, it's really like a, on an as need uh, basis if they need to repair a part, or uh, but we can we'll dig in and find that out for you. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Any other questions? Yes, um, my question is kind of more broad. It's just, I know that I went to Mace Chapel and they have um, something like this, Mace Chapel okay. Elementary, and I think it's great. I, I hope, I wish all schools could have it, but obviously it's not feasible. Is there any um, talk or way of um, more kids being able to act, more schools being able to access this, whether it's, you know, through a field trip type thing or a bus or something where they, I just think that this is a great where the kids are doing it themselves and running it themselves. And I would love for more schools to be able to have this opportunity, even if it's not in their school. There, yes. In fact, there are only three schools in Baltimore County public schools that don't have a TV studio. So um, most three? of our kids can access three schools that do not have a TV, have a TV studio. I don't know what those three schools are specifically. Out of, all out, out of all elementary, middle, middle, and, middle public, and high school. I mean, right? middle and high. Correct. It doesn't seem, there's only th which three? I, I'd have to find out what those three are for you. I'm mm -hmm. not, I don't know the, the three schools off the top of my head. Ms. Damanowski, thank you for raising that. We had been um, trying to think now. Um, we had been in the process of expanding the TV studios uh, up through, I think, the, just like the, the pandemic, you know, is so in disruptive. Um, so we'll have to go back and identify what are those three remaining schools because we had been in, in that process of ensuring that there was equitable access because we agree with you. This is an exciting, you know, opportunity for kids to create. It's It's good. I mean, it's just a lot of planning and involvement and creativity for students and they learn uh, logistics and management. Uh, it's a true example of career readiness um, skills that they're developing. So we'll find out those three um, and identify what's our plan to address those three. I mean, I've been to, uh, I've only been to a handful of schools and I would say that uh, May Chapel was the only one there may have been one other one, but that was the only one that I, was shown to me that I saw. I know Carol Manor doesn't have one. Um, Pine Grove Elementary. Um, I, I mean, like this full studio that you're telling me there's only right. three schools in all of Baltimore County that do not have this. Right. That don't have yeah, a so full studio working. Yeah, so the TV studio to go is actually pretty um, mobile. And so it may have been in a, like, so for example, <clears throat> that, that picture on the bottom right happens to be a school in which I was a principal. And that is a very small nook of the school that um, when that door is closed, you wouldn't know the TV studio was there. And so it's possible that when you're in some schools, you don't necessarily see the TV studio or it's not being used at the time that you're visiting. Um, but it's very possible that they actually do have um, a TV studio in in the school. Some of them are, especially in the magnet schools, like you can't miss it when you walk down the hallway. It's there, it's behind glass and you can see it. And then some of them like that picture on the right, like I said, on the bottom right is very much um, tucked away. Sometimes they're in like the library media studio, like the, the old workroom that the library media specialists used to have. Sometimes they're tucked away back there. If you ask to go see the library, sometimes you might find it there too. Okay, I guess I'm just... If, if I can, um, 
Miss Lanza um, shared with me that it's Norwood, Red House Run, and Catonsville. Thank you, Miss Lanza. Catonsville all, I'm sorry, um, are the three schools that were referenced. Say um, that again, the, Norwood? Norwood, Red House Run, and Catonsville. Red House Run is, you know, in a temporary location as they're going through um, that construction and they did not bring the materials with them. Um, and then I just want to add to to just to reflect what you were sharing, Ms. Dobinowski, and what I know Ms. Lichter and um, Dr. Elmendorf were describing. Some schools, the use was primarily just around morning announcements, and we did learn a lot during the pandemic about using different software like Google Meet for the purpose of just morning announcements. In other schools, it is a much more well developed part of you know they have clubs or they have students that this is a part of, and then of course in our magnet schools. It's actually a part of coursework and they learn much more um, application skills around video editing and, and communication. So it's a wide range of how the materials can be um, used. And then as Dr. Elmendorf said, some schools have a dedicated studio space. Others just utilize the equipment for the purpose of broadcasting. So there is a wide range um, and that's probably what you have experienced. OK, thank you. Sure. And then Norwood's an early, still an early learning. It goes up to grade three, right? Correct. I believe that's a part of the rationale why they didn't um, have this to begin with, but they too have morning announcements and have been exploring with different um, technology to support that idea of broadcasting, but do not have a dedicated TV studio. Any other questions? Is there a motion to pass the contract for video production equipment and associated services? So I moved Offerman. Thank you. Is there a second? Second Pumphrey. Thank you. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you. And the last one is School Library Collection Resources. And for that, Ms. Shea. Surprise. I'm back. <laughs> um, so this um, actually is a new contract. So we have as part of our um, central funding in the Office of Library, Media, and Educational Technology, funding that we allocate to schools for the purpose of uh, curating and updating their collection in their schools. And so this contract um, is a new contract. In the past, we had a very old um, contract that we are replacing. Um, and so this will allow for us to identify vendors that library media specialists can use for the purpose of purchasing um, titles for their library. This is also obviously very important as we build new schools, um, since that's a part of their um, startup costs in creating a new library. Ms. Cox, could you advance the slide just so that when we're on the archive, it's there. Thank you. That way we're discussing what's visible. Thank you. Are there any questions about the school library collection resource con contract? OK, hearing none, is there a motion to approve the school library collection resource contract? So moved, Offerman. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Hassan. Thank you. May we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Pomfrey? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so do they all go this smooth? Is that Mr. Offerman? Is this how it works? I was works? just about to say, wow. Uh, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Ellen Durf and Mache. I normally try to get it so uh, an individual is straight through. I got confused in the video. Uh, that gave technology. me a chance to sip my water. I appreciate it. Yeah, the there time you go. Um, yeah, so I just want to say, wow, because, and I know Mr. Offerman's been with us, so he can share typically in the past what we've done is the teams would have actually presented the slides and talked through each one, and we would have taken Q&A along the way. Um, but the, the volume that we had this time, and typically we have, I don't know, Mr. Offerman, would you say three 
four maybe. We typically don't have, I think it was seven or so today. Um, so that's why we wanted to try it differently, but it seemed like it was so efficient. So I'm open to whatever feedback you have around um, things that if you want to continue this way, if you want to uh, do it differently or anything I can do to help support us in this process. So. So um, I, I mean, I appreciated having the PowerPoints ahead of time and to, you know, take my time looking at them and then, you know, taking notes and getting my questions together. I know it was more work for your staff, um, but I also think they're good resources for others that may have questions um, about the contracts too. But um, I would want to hear from the other um, board members as far as did you appreciate looking at them ahead of time? Would you rather have them done the whole PowerPoint in front of us? Um, can you give us some feedback so we know how to proceed next time? Uh, I believe that uh, having the PowerPoints ahead of time is very, very valuable. Uh, I I was able to I was able to uh, to, to look ahead and 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 see what we're going to do. And you know I I I I think it I think it made I think it made I think it made it go very smoothly. Okay, great. Thank you, and you've got the perspective of you know before, before and after. Um, Ms. Dominowski or Ms. Pumphrey or Ms. Hassan, any feedback? I agree. I like to have the information in advance. I could take my time and kind of reread things that I did. I would re-listen to things that I didn't understand. Yeah. Um, does the public have access to this as well? Yes, okay. ma'am. Um, once is, they go on board docs, um, they are available for the public to see and go. And they're also part of the archive. For the public to go back so even if let's say a month from now you're having a conversation with someone in your community you could refer them back to the powerpoint that's narrated and even this video archive of our actual q a and discussion okay great thank you mm -hmm. my pleasure thank you mrs Hassan. Um, mr minowski do you have any feedback i, I agree I, it was very helpful thank you is there anything that they did not include? I know that I appreciated um, being able to read about how we were going to monitor the use of whatever was being purchased. Um, and I also liked hearing about the teacher feedback and then what was the action steps based on that feedback, if, if um, appropriate, it worked for the pre-K one. Is there anything that was not included in the PowerPoint slides that any of the board members um, think could have helped be added? I wouldn't say added, but I would just reiterate what you said that I'd like to hear the teacher feedback and um, I like to hear both positive and negative, even if the negative is in, is in the you know sure. minority. I still like to hear all of that to kind of sure. see a full picture. Yeah, I, I just want to say thank you for that, Ms. Pumphrey. I know sometimes people think that we only bring forward the positive, but we're we're happy to bring forward the, the critical feedback as well because we actually do pay attention and we use that um, to help us uh, guide. Uh, the decision. So we're happy to do that. I think one of the things that's um, I just want to say thank you. It sounds like this um, pre-recorded presentation is really working um, because then we're not uh, we can make presentations if we need need to be to your point uh, even a little longer, right? Because we're not just confined to the time in the committee. The presentations can be full and robust and then we can use our time together for the discussion piece. So uh, so thank you for that. And you just know, one I more think, thing, just one more thing going back to my original. It's also, I think, good for the public to hear that feedback. Yep. So so I'm aware that you're hearing the negative feedback as well as yeah. the positive, but I think the public um, needs to be aware of that as well. So that sure. sometimes they, they think that, you know, we're, I know, just to make sure things are transparent, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. Line. My team and I have, you know, we're, we're happy to have the, all of that in discussion. Thank you, Ms. Pomfrey. Um, the other piece is that, you know, this went really smoothly and I appreciate that for my first time. So, I mean, but I guess if there are contracts that we, you know, that are more, I don't want to say controversial, but have more elements to it, we would have had a lot more time to be able to really work on the questions and answers. So I think that yeah. that's that's another benefit of doing the homework beforehand so that we can have more time for a discussion. Um, wasn't yeah. needed tonight, which is fine, but I'm sure it will be um, at some point. OK, so I think based on everybody's comments, we really like having the information ahead of time. Um, so first, thank you. Um, and I think, you know, the quick summary and then giving us a chance to ask questions. I think that really felt like it, it worked well. Right. So we'll, we'll do that moving forward um, at this point. I don't know if we have time or not. Are we good until 
just because I'd like to hear some of the topics, like the informational topics. What are things that my team and I can put together for you to help you um, learn more about things that you're interested in understanding uh, that we do on behalf of our children? So um, I can start first. I have an idea while everybody else starts okay. to think about it. And that would be, um, and you hinted to it, the CTE program. You know, yep. BCPS does have a robust CTE yeah. program with many different aspects. So mm -hmm. at some point, I would love to hear more about the CTE program, you know, how it falls into each of the schools um, and even any plans for next steps. Thank you. If I just can put a plug in for our CTE programs, just general knowledge, we have um, really the very best CTE. Uh, we lead the state of Maryland in terms of students participating in CTE programs. We, I, I believe, and Dr. Grubbs, if he's still on, will correct me, or Ms. Shea or Ms. Fisher, uh, I think 54% of our students, so slightly more than one out of every two students participates in CTE at some point. Uh, and we like to say this is not um, vocational ed of several generations back. This is really all of our CTE programs are designed to not just have students career ready for the day they cross that stage, but college ready if they so choose. Um, and so I get excited about CTE and I'll calm myself down now, but uh, we're very passionate about it. So thanks for the opportunity. And that may be a good meeting to do in person at a location mm -hmm. where you can then really highlight some of the programs that are that are taking place. Just just a thought. Yeah. Um, Ms. Dominowski, do you have any topics for the future at this point? I'm not quite prepared yet. Um, okay. I'm, just send I'm them, still right? thinking. Yeah, yeah okay. that's OK. And as things come to you, you know, just email and let us know and then we'll work. We'll work on where we can fit it in. Ms. Pumphrey, do you have any topics? Probably need to think on it a bit as well, but and I think you already mentioned this, but I'd love to hear more about um, the various magnet programs that we have throughout schools, including um, the arts. OK. Oh, definitely in our arts program. Thank you. Ms. Hassan, do you have any topics that you would like at this point? Um, nothing as of right now. I'm sure they'll come up later, and when they do, I will reach out and let you guys know. Wonderful. And Mr. Offerman, before you leave us, do you have anything else you want to hear about? Uh, nothing specifically for me, but I, I think it's probably good to uh, perhaps or on some kind of rotating basis uh, go back and look at uh, the uh, standardized testing programs to just give people a view of kind of what's there and and kind of uh, w when it happens and uh, and the role that the uh, PCPS plays. For instance, I'm thrilled that we're now paying for all the uh, advanced placement tests, which was Excellent. a real concern of mine earlier. So yeah. I thought it, I, I thought it, it, uh, it, it stood in the way of, uh, stood in the that way of uh, giving everyone an equal chance to be successful. But you know, thank that's you. Fine. Thank you. That, that that's a good idea. I was in a school yesterday, and the AP was talking about all the testing coming up and. It was hard to follow exactly, you know, what he was saying. So that is a good idea. Any other ideas? And again, you can um, either email me your I you can e email me your ideas because I meet with um, Dr. McComas ahead of time to plan out the meetings. OK, so the next part would be any further business. I think we just took care of that. Mm -hmm. it, is there any other further business to discuss? OK. Um, the last item is announcements. The next curriculum committee meeting will be on March 23rd. And then hearing no further business. Oh my goodness, we're going to give you a whole lot of time back in your day. <laughs> um, I will declare the meeting closed. So thank you everybody for um, helping to get it ready, you know, presenting, and then for the board members for attending. I appreciate it. So the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you and have okay. a great Thank rest you, of your everyone. day. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, go Good outside. Time. Yes, <laughs> right. sunshine. Thank you. And I'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs> okay, thanks.